So are you going to show me like the, what the rhino beetle does? I can't show you because I can't bring a tree in here. I know, I know. <laughs> I considered that, but I would have had to bring some big stuff in here and that just probably would not work out too well. <laughs> Do you know of any examples of invasive species? Rhino beetle. Rhino beetles. Rhino beetles. Good. Rhino beetles. The wild pigs. The brown tree snake. Brown tree snakes. Brown tree snakes. The chain of love. The cadena de amor. Fire ant and fire ants. This, Luca, is a male rhino beetle. And you can tell the rhino beetle because of that big horn. See that? That's why they're called rhino beetles. Yeah, but the rhino beetle has a complete life cycle. This is the adult beetle, and when it lays its eggs, the eggs hatch into what they call the first inch star, then it grows into a second inch star, and finally into the third inch star. So look at this grub. See that? If you find dead organic matter or a dead coconut tree. You can tell this is a rhino beetle because of the big head. And this grub is bigger than any other grub that we have on island. This is called the pupa. So from- Oh yeah, I've seen. Yeah, so from the grub, it will then turn into beetle? the pupa and then into the beetle. It's a life cycle. Yeah, exactly. Do you want to hold the beetle? Does it bite? No. Okay. Hold it up like that. Okay. Let it walk to you. Now, this is the only one that damages, that eats and feeds on the coconut tree. But the grubs are actually real good decomposers. And what they did was take a coconut tree and eat it and turn it into that beautiful compost. These grubs are what we call beneficials. But we want to prevent them from turning into beetles because we don't want them to be killing the coconut tree. What is this? What did you just say? Did you say it looks pretty? Yes. Actually, it does. And that's the problem. You see, this is growing all over the island of Guam. It is smothering all our native trees and all the other plants. And some people like to pick this and move it and plant it because it's pretty, like what you just said. I know a lot of people like to harvest this and then use it for decorations at parties. This is called Chain of Love or Cadena de Amor. Can you say Cadena de Amor? Cadena de Amor. Okay. And this is a really bad invasive. A lot of the islands around Micronesia are very worried about this spreading to their islands. So we need to take a look at this and we need to educate our friends and family about not taking this back to their islands, okay? This lizard was just found on a ship. Guam Customs and Quarantine intercepted this, captured it, and prevented it from entering huh. Guam. It snuck onto a ship or Evidently, somebody bought it? I think it snuck on a ship. Huh. And it's a female, so there's a possibility that it could be pregnant or have eggs. eggs. And then we'll have a bunch of these lizards on Guam. Yeah, and we don't want it. that. But they caught it, yeah. so they can't. Everyone needs to do their part. You, me, right? Okay. Do you see these tiny little things in the vial? Yes. Okay. These are called little fire ant. What I have here is a little stick. If you look carefully, look at these little spots there. You see that? Yes. Those are ants. And these ants, are very nasty. They sting, and when they sting, it'll feel like your skin is on fire, or you feel like you're a- That's why it's called a fire ant. That's why it's called a fire ant. Or it'll feel like you have an allergic reaction. They're found around the island in a number of different spots, but the reason why they're bad is because when this ant go into an area, the other organisms, the native species, will move out of the area. And pretty soon in a particular area, there will only be this little fire and all other species, all the birds will move out of the way. They won't come to an area where it's infested with little fire ant. Kids can't go outside and play in their yard 
They can't climb or play in the trees because when the wind blows, the little fire ants fall down from the trees and they start stinging the kids. In other islands, like in Fiji, you have farmlands that have been farmed for generations and people are abandoning their farms now. They can't practice their culture. They can't grow the native plants and crops because the little fire ants have chased them out. It's also a, a big threat for Micronesia. They're currently trying to eradicate it on the island of Yap. So how did they get here? We don't know exactly how it came in, but the chances are they probably came in on maybe some ornamental plants. And when it was brought in, it had the little fire ants. These have multiple queens. They can actually have an entire colony in a bottle cap. You're lying. That's scary. <laughs> but that's the truth. You ever go to the beach or walk around in the yard and you get bit in your feet by ants? Yeah. This is the ant that does that. So this is the ant that we, we've had for a long time, and that's called the tropical fire ant. So look at the difference between how small those are and how big these are. There could be at least a colony in here and those are very small, so. Yeah, so these are the ones that most people are aware of. Yes. And there are some people who, when talking with them, they did not know that they had little fire ants. They just thought that when they walk out into the yard, they're allergic to something and it's making them itchy. Mm. And they don't go out into the yard anymore because of that. And what it really is, it's little fire ants. So are there any ways we've found out to like stop these guys Actually, from spreading? They have developed a number of different tools. The first thing that you need to do is if you think that you have little fire ant at your house or on your property, is to call 475 Pest and they can help you. And it's very important that we properly identify the ants. If it is little fire ant, there's a specific protocol for eradicating or, or managing the little fire ant. I feel itchy just talking about it. <laughs> for more information on how you can protect your property from the little fire ant, you can go online to stoplfa.guam.gov or you can call 475 Pest and they will help you with your pest identification or at least guide you. This was a bonus clip from our Nihi Kids Talk About Invasive Species episode. If you haven't seen it, click here. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for new content notifications.